Happy New Year, everyone! This is Mei Yu, and welcome to Fun Friday. Every Friday, I try to do something new, fun, or challenging. Thank you for all your kind comments in my previous video. I'm glad you enjoyed coloring and chilling with me. And also thanks to everyone who told me they got my books for Christmas. I hope you have fun with them and I hope they help boost your creativity. So today I'm going to reimagine Disney princesses as goths. I think this is going to be a very interesting challenge because this will be the first time that I'm going to reimagine Disney princesses but not have their strict color schemes in my pieces and also I'm going to be changing their outfits quite a lot in some of them so the challenge is how am I going to make them still look like you know the familiar Disney princess but in my own way but I'm changing their outfits and their colors so this is going to be very fun to find out how they're going to turn out I'm gonna start with a lovely sweet girl like Ariel. So I was thinking about how am I gonna handle Ariel's hair and of course her outfit, even the pose. I was thinking I could leave her hair just, you know, as is, like the long flowing red, you know, beautiful hair that, you know, we all love. But I was thinking, could I do something a little bit differently? Maybe just have some part of the hairstyle like you know have it changed so it looks a little bit a little bit more different a little bit more maybe modern i was thinking because ariel is kind of rebellious in her story i was thinking she could be like some kind of cool like more of a modern goth uh character and maybe she's really rebellious she has her own way of doing things she's very headstrong she knows what she wants and she wants to go after it so Keeping all of those things in mind, I thought to have her hairstyle like this with part of it shaved. I thought that was a really cool like look for her. I'm not used to seeing Ariel like this at all, so I thought that was really nice. And then as for her outfit, I wanted to design it in such a way so that I could still kind of be reminded of her shell bra and maybe a little bit of her, you know, like her um, uh, shiny mermaid tail in a very subtle way so i thought to give her this like um it's not really like a bikini top it's more like just this like uh very small crop top and then i was thinking to put like another layer on top that's kind of like a fishnet material and i kind of like that because you know fishnet mermaid <laughs> anyways I was loving this style so that I thought to incorporate the fishnets into the legs as well. And then as for the skirt, I think the only way I am wanting to kind of remind myself of this shimmery mermaid tail is in the colors. So I had to do a little bit of a balancing act when it came to the colors because I didn't want the character's colors to be too bright or too, you know, like, just too vibrant. I wanted her to still look like this cool goth character. So I wanted to get into a lot of the blacks, but how was I going to balance the black versus the famous, you know, aerial colors? So I wanted to layer a bit of, like a tiny bit of the colors on top or somehow make her colors less uh, like standing out in some way. So I had to really think about that. I really like how I handled the skirt because I can't really see my interpretation of this character wearing like a bright, you know, shimmery green skirt. So I feel the black part of the skirt really holds it down and makes it look really solid. And then the sh like the slight green shading on top kind of just adds to the familiarity of, you know, Ariel's colors, which I think is a nice balance.
<laughs> I love that shaved part. Now I can just imagine my goth Ariel having this argument with her dad about wanting to see, you know, like this guy she really likes. Oh my. What do you think the conversation could be like? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Now I'm going to reimagine Mulan as a goth character and I'm going to take into consideration her personality. She could be quite tomboyish and she's very strong-willed. I'm also not going to reimagine her in a similar way that I did with Ariel, so meaning Mulan's not going to be like a modern, you know, teen goth type of character. I'm thinking more like Mulan could be more like a more of a classical looking gothic character. I'm thinking to give her a very different outfit. I actually love drawing these little bits and details in the outfit, like all the little trim areas and the little like things that hang around the edges of the outfit. I was thinking to give my Mulan character more of a like a masculine or androgynous look. I also love her little top hat, it looks super cute. I love this design where I gave her this really long, slender looking, like, uh, kind of like a coat layer, and then it just fans out gracefully down below. And then as for the, the legs, I wanted to make her look like she could, you know, spring into action if she needed to, but she usually doesn't. So there's a refined look to her, but, you know, in an instant, she could probably kick bad guys' butts. And because I was thinking that way, I was thinking, well, you know, why don't I give her something in her hand? Like she's holding something or, you know, like Mulan has a sword in the uh, original story. Obviously, I don't really want to do a sword in this one because I feel it's a little too easy. I wanted to infuse something of my own creation into it, but what can she hold? Like, for example, if she's walking down the street in like, you know, Victorian times, for example, what can she, you know, use that's, you know, like a usual daily thing, but she could also use it as a weapon to defend herself or her friends. And then I was thinking, why not like some kind of like a staff or like a walking cane of some kind that looks really cool and refined. And then I thought, well, that is a really cool idea. And I'm going to do a little bit more to the cane design to infuse some, you know, familiar characters into it. In case you're new to my channel or if you want to rewatch some fan favorites of when I reimagined Mulan in different ways, you can check out these videos and more on my Mayu channel. I hope you enjoy and they can inspire you. As for the color scheme, so I was debating with myself what kind of color scheme should I give Mulan? Should I kind of go the route where I added, you know, lots of black and then I added a little bit of the green on Ariel, for example, because Mulan has the green um, dress. But also Mulan, you know, she does have different outfits throughout the movie. So I was thinking, what if I went in a different way and I kind of incorporated some little bit of like the dark blue from what of her outfits, but I'm not gonna follow the uh, the character's colors so strictly or so closely because I also wanted to uh, like infuse something that's a little bit more different 
something more of my own into this character design. So I went with this dark navy blue, which I can see her wearing, but it's also, you know, like a nice color for this, uh, like gothic, you know, attire as well. And then I will add some little hints of different colors here and there just to kind of break up all of the dark colors because I do want to have some contrast like with her white pants. I think that's a really nice way to break up the darkness of the coat around her. But other than that, I do want to keep things kind of on a dark side. In case you're into designing clothing, dresses, and outfits for your OCs or characters, I hope my various books on designing and drawing outfits for female and male characters can give you lots of my own personal experiences so you'll get a good head start. My how to draw books are an essential resource for anyone wanting to better their own artistic skills, drawing abilities, and creativity. I'll be doing more how to draw books in the near future on all kinds of important areas and topics so you can become the best artist you can be. I'm glad many of you already own several of my titles, and some of you told me you got entire collections of my books. I'm super happy you're taking your own art to the next level with my books. Get yours from my Mayu bookstore on Amazon, the link's in the video description, and I hope you have fun drawing. I love how the red plays with the dark blues and the whites and the blacks. It's super nice. She can kick some serious butt. Baddies beware. And now it's Belle's turn to be turned into a goth character. So I'm going to be really playing with her big beautiful ball gown. I'm going to do a lot of things to it to make it look very gothic, but still, hopefully, still reminds me of Belle. I'm probably not wanting to include her famous yellow color in there. So this is going to be an interesting challenge for me to make her and the ball gown look very familiar to me, but I'm going to change like the design and the overall color scheme. I think it's perfect that Belle's story takes place mainly in a big, dark, lonely castle. So I was thinking in my version, what if she was like, you know, walking through the deserted hallways and she just wanted to dance to like the spirits of like, you know, this dark deserted castle. What would her gown look like as it flows around her? Maybe no one is there. She's just dancing by herself. And you know, it's a little lonely, but also very eerie and beautiful. I wanted the dress to look like it could flow. It has a lot of fabric, a lot of layers, you know, it has lots of things going on. Uh, for her top, I wanted to give her a corset with uh, like a little skull in the middle. I thought that was a very, you know, nice little touch. And as for the like the overall shape. Obviously I want it to be really big and grand. I love doing the little lace details, the trim, the edges, and the little seam lines that goes into like the different parts of the dress. And I knew I wanted to do something with roses. One of the things I love most about designing gothic attire and dresses and outfits is the detailing. I love doing the little lace designs, the lace trim along the edges of, you know, fabric. It's just really, it's so satisfying and it's so fun. I still like to open up her dress across the shoulders and as for her gloves, I was thinking to really ruffle the edges of them and make them look really fancy. So I made the like the fabric folds really large around the elbows. I also thought it would be fun to add a cute little collar with a ribbon uh, bow in front. And as for a nice design element in her gown, I did want to incorporate more of the rose theme into my character design. So I thought about, you know, the way that um, Belle's like original dress, they have these waves uh, around her ball gown. I wanted to do these wave, like the wave pattern, but instead of having them as fabric seams, I thought to use like uh, these like 
interesting, beautiful, gothic-looking roses, and the wave pattern would be there were thorns, and the roses and thorns would be just you know growing around her dress. I thought that was so beautiful. It's a little eerie and haunting. I thought it was just perfect for the the look I was going for. And now to color this piece. So I was thinking, you know, like I mentioned before, I don't really want to have any bright colors, so no yellows at all, which is a little scary in the beginning because how can Belle look like her, you know, her in her ballroom gown without yellow? But I wanted to really take this chance and experiment and explore, go out of my comfort zone. I wanted this piece to have a very limited color palette. Lots of blacks, maybe a little bit of reds for the roses, some whites maybe here and there. But overall, it's just a very nice, limited, sophisticated color palette. And because I did put a lot of intricate details in the laces and the designs in the ballroom gown, I didn't want them to get lost as I added the black colors on top. So I was really mindful of how I left little white areas to show those details. If you love my gothic designs and dresses, I'm sure you'll love my recent coloring book release called Gothic Glamour, a beautifully dark coloring book. It's filled with my original, never-before-seen gothic illustrations of beautiful women in various gothic and dark dresses and outfits, handsome men, haunting scenery, and dark surreal scenes. I made some images more intricate, while others are simpler, so there's something for everyone. I like to think of my gothic glamour coloring book as like the big sister to gothic cuties, so if you have that title, I'm sure you'll love this new one. It's available in three sizes and formats, the regular soft cover, the large soft cover with more room to express yourself, and the large hard cover for a handsome look and heft of a hard cover. No matter what coloring book you're getting for yourself or as gifts, I'm sure you'll love to relax, unwind, and create lasting creative memories for yourself. I've seen more and more fans finishing my entire books, so I'm so happy that you're continuing on this artistic journey. When you look back at what you've created in my coloring books, I think it's a very proud feeling. It's like a feeling that you've accomplished something really nice and so unique to yourself. Get your coloring books from a Mayu bookstore on Amazon, the links below, and keep up the great work everyone! I'll be sharing some more fan creations from the Instagram hashtag MayuArt and from your Amazon reviews at the end of this video. I am so glad I went with this color scheme, it looks so different, but I can still tell it's Belle, just so beautiful and haunting. This is exactly what I had in mind. Okay, let me know which princess reimagining was your favorite, and if you want to see more videos like this, then smash the like button and subscribe in case you haven't yet so you won't miss my new videos. Be sure to turn on the bell for notifications, and thank you for watching everyone. I will see you in my next video on Fun Friday. Here's another collection of your fan creations you did from my various coloring books. There's over a hundred since last time, and I'm so glad you're sharing them on the Mayart hashtag on Instagram and in your Amazon reviews. Many of you got my coloring books for holiday gifts, so I'm glad you're starting new creative journeys for yourself. Some of you are new fans, so welcome! I hope you have a memorable and exciting art adventure with all of us. We're all on this great path together, and I hope my books can help you reach your full creative potential. This is a community, an online family we're all building together, a safe and creative place where we can all pursue our imagination in a supportive, caring environment. Thanks for coloring with me on my previous Christmas coloring video. It's nice to just unwind, you know, free yourself and let your imagination take over. I've also seen some fans making personalized holiday cards or gifts using my coloring book pages. That's something very special that you made and you're giving it to someone else. You know, it just speaks from the heart. I love how diverse our growing coloring family is becoming. 
There are so many different fans from all over the world, from different backgrounds, cultures, and also art interests and skill levels. I love all of you so much and all the different techniques and color schemes you're using. Some of you love layering for fine shading effects and others like to quickly cover areas with solid colors. They're all lovely and unique. I love that you feel free to be yourself and create whatever you want in my books. You're the artist, you get to decide how to use the artwork you've created. I love your creative freedom. In case you're still learning or you're just beginning, try not to let anxiety or fear hold you back. Mistakes are there to make us better. And most of my coloring books have two sets of the images, so there's no pressure to get it right the first time. Experiment and you might surprise yourself. It makes me feel fulfilled as an artist and creator to know that many of you gave my coloring books and drawing books as gifts to your loved ones. You're encouraging and helping their imagination and creativity. I just love that because, you know, when someone is motivated to do well with their creative thinking and ideas or artistic skills, they feel they can achieve a lot more. That encouragement is so important and I'm really happy that many of you are helping your friends, family members, and those you care about to feel like that. As for me, I'll continue to make more coloring and how to draw books to keep inspiring you to become your creative best, no matter your skill level right now. I truly believe anyone can become a creative thinker, artist, or designer if they want to and if they practice their skills. I love encouraging all of you. You're all so special and talented in your own ways. Thanks for putting your reviews and fan creations on Amazon as well. You can find all my books on my Mayu bookstore. The link's in the video description. Happy drawing and coloring as always. And thank you for being on this grand art journey with me for this past year. I hope you're all doing well, stay safe, and best wishes for the new year. I look forward to all the new videos, art, and books I'm going to be making for you.